Welcome Climate Viewers, this is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at ClimateViewer.com with Facts Minus Fear Porn. It's November 24th, 2018, and we're here to talk about 5G and broadband from space and airplanes. Uh, you wouldn't believe it, but right now they're deploying uh, internet broadband in the sky you're not going to be able to avoid it it's going to be worldwide and i'd like to give you all the details uh, all of this information is of course free of charge and open source so please remember to support me on patreon.com slash climate viewer or give a one-time donation on paypal or gofundme it'd be greatly appreciated so let's get right into the details of this really creepy story about 5g from space so i originally heard about this with facebook um talking about their free internet from space and this you know goes back several years where they were discussing it and other countries were opposing the idea but basically you know this is this is really coming to fruition pretty quickly um with what's called SpaceX's Starlink. And SpaceX has now gained approval uh, to launch these satellites into space. It's going to be kind of crazy. As you can see here, this is dated 2016. SpaceX plans worldwide satellite internet with low latency gigabit speed. Uh, 2017 with latency lows 25 milliseconds SpaceX to launch broadband satellites in 2019 and just as recently as uh, November 15th 2018 FCC tells SpaceX it can deploy up to 11,943 broadband satellites so this is where we really get to the today's story um, initial launch will be 4,425 satellites followed by 7,518 closer to the ground and we're talking about extremely low earth orbit so SpaceX proposes to add a very low earth orbit NGSO non geostationary satellite orbit constellation consisting of 7,518 satellites operating at an altitude from 335 kilometers to 346 kilometers and the newly approved satellites would use frequencies between 37.5 and 42 gigahertz for space to earth transmission and frequencies between 47.2 and 51 gigahertz for earth to space transmission um, and the FCC has approved that and they go into all of the different um, companies, Telsat, Leosat, um, and Kepler Communications, all in you know combination are going to be doing this thing. And uh, one of the big concerns of this, of course, is that it's going to create a lot of space junk. Um, but we'll get to that in just a second. As you can see here, they talk about space debris. Um, and it says, as of April 2018, there were 1,886 operating satellites orbiting Earth. And the number of objects classified as debris is much larger. About 500,000 objects between 1 to 10 centimeters were estimated to be in orbit as of 2012. And at least 23,000 were man-made. So uh, they're going to put a whole bunch more up there and those are going to be broadcasting Wi-Fi into your head. Um, you know, you won't be able to avoid it. It's a worldwide network called Starlink and uh, 5G from space. Back to the story. So as we can see here, um, this is the actual FCC approval. All these links will be provided on climateviewer.com after this video is finished. Um, so what are we talking about? 5G, as we can see here. Um, everybody's heard about 5G and, you know, a lot of people are complaining about the health and ramifications of that. I can completely understand why. Uh, 
but what they're talking about are frequencies in the range of um, they've got two different bands here one's frequency range one which is less than six gigahertz and frequency range two which is 24 to 86 gigahertz so this is a V band it's also X band K under K and K above um, and a little bit of the C band I would say but basically these are the radio frequency bands in the gigahertz range um, also known as millimeter wave um, so they're going to be on a worldwide basis and as they stated they're going to be at 336 kilometers so to give people an idea um, the world is not flat despite what you may have heard and it looks mighty flat whenever you look at it to scale um, and this is Mount Everest the tallest mountain on earth and as you can see this is the troposphere and that's the top of the troposphere right there we're going up a little bit here uh, this is the top of the stratosphere right about here and we can see this is a uh, jet contrails here cirrus clouds here the ozone layers about here the highest weather balloons range from 18 to 53 kilometers top of the stratosphere 50 kilometers and as we tend to go up uh, we'll see that noctilucent clouds are on 80 kilometers uh, top of the mesosphere or uh, what do we got here that's the top of the mesosphere at 85 kilometers right there and we're still looking up looking up and we see the International Space Station is at about 330 kilometers to 410 that's about where these satellites are going to be deployed at. That's very low Earth orbit. The Hubble telescope, and then finally, top of the thermosphere um, at 600 kilometers, which is also the bottom of the exosphere, is about where the Terra satellite is. So we're talking right about here around where the International Space Station is. That's where they're going to be deploying all of these satellites, which brings up the concern for space junk. Um, so the FCC said uh, they're going to launch a review of satellite orbital debris mitigation rules in the new space age because space junk is out of hand and putting all of these you know satellites into very low earth orbit there's a good chance that many of them are going to fall back to earth and could you know cause you know lots of problems for people down here so they want to uh, be sure that that's safe and uh, as you can see here these are operational satellites um, the ones in green here and then we have non-operational satellites in orange as you can see here so these non-operational satellites a lot of these are space junk as you can see here this is space junk in red and we'll just scroll out that is all space junk so we really junked up space uh, you can see the geostationary orbit ring on the outside here those are the ones that stay exactly where they are they don't actually you know revolve around the planet very much but as you can see these are all moving if you watch very closely they're tracked in real time uh, blue dots being you know not junk now I made the not junk red as you can see here there's a lot of satellites orbiting the earth but these are at higher altitudes so a lot of this is going to be very low altitude and it's going to be a concern because it's going to fall out so that's a lot of space junk um, I don't know if you've ever seen the Disney or Pixar film WALL-E uh, but we're already kind of there that's a, that's a lot of space junk um, which brings up the point that you know they, they had this thing uh, called the Project Westford Needles. This was a idea to put artificial needles in space. They dumped 480 million of these copper dipole antennas in space. And uh, there's, some of them are still in space today, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, pretty nuts. Um, you know, that... You know, scientists have, have long been putting junk in space and there hasn't been you know a consensus on how to clean it up 
But now with the FCC approving, you know, 7,000 plus broadband 5G satellites in space, uh, you're not going to be able to avoid these signals everywhere. I'm surprised that, you know, everybody from uh, radio telescope operators to even the guys up at HARP, as much as Chris Fallen was complaining about uh, how quiet it was in Alaska, it won't be very soon. Um, but regardless, uh, you can see that the project was for needles. They're still in space. Uh, they were launched in 20, uh, 1963. And here are some of those uh, Westford needles still in orbit today. Uh, there are the rings with the red dots, and you can see Westford needles all here. There's about 38 clumps of them still in orbit today. So they don't they don't exactly go away. Um, pretty crazy stuff. And that was just a science experiment. So uh, what are they doing there? You know they have the orbital. Orbitable, orbital Debris Program Office, which tracks all of this stuff. And they track it using, you know, ground-based radars and telescopes, uh, all of which are mapped out on Climate Viewer 3D as well. You can come over to Climate Viewer 3D and zoom your butt out here. Go to Add Maps. Scroll up here to Pollution and Privacy, Atmospheric Sensors, and EMF Sites. And you can see all of those radars um, from around the world. Here's uh, some of those. And we have the laser sites, the International Laser Ranging uh, Service, which is here. And uh, let's see, what else do they have? But, and here's the radio telescopes and satellite, you know, telescope operations around the world. So all of this is the space fence which is used to track um, all of these facility, you know, all of this space junk. And as you can see, these are what they look like. Big radomes. Uh, the one in the picture earlier was Eglin Air Force Base, which you can see here. Uh, there's lots of these things. This is the actual Navispasser space fence. Um, you know, and they're all over the place. We've got laser beams to look at them. Uh, one system's called GeoDSS. And I track all of these from around the world. But um, basically, you know, keeping up with all the space junk has become a serious problem. So uh, they've, you know, talked about possibilities for active space debris removal, like the Madrid ion beam, as you can see in this video here. Only 239 views on that. Apparently, not a lot of people got the memo. But you know, new space junk solutions would clean up debris with ion beams. September 27th, 2018. Uh, and you can read all about that here. Uh, so, you know, blast them out of space. I don't know how well that's going to work. I think you're just going to make smaller debris if you go shooting at it. Uh, but we'll see how that works out for them. And here's the actual original plasma thruster, new space debris removal technology. Uh, you can't make this stuff up. So while SpaceX is talking about, you know, putting its broadband 5G network into space, we're getting all of this stuff. This space junk removal experiment will harpoon and net debris in orbit. April 6, 2018. And you can see right here, they've got like a big fishing net in space to suck up the space debris. Wonderful. But that would be, you know, bad enough that they're, you know, going to put 5G all over space um, and really, you know, screw everything up for all of us EMF sensitive individuals like myself. Um, my entire house is wired. I do not have wireless devices, even though I have 5G and, you know, 2G and 5G built into my cable modem router. I have it in bridged mode, which means it's functionally disabled. Um, we do not use wireless in my house and no wireless devices of any sort. Um, that doesn't stop wireless signals from intruding my life and affecting my health. And, uh, you know, I know that there are a lot of people like me. So, 
Uh, if it weren't bad enough that they're going to launch space, you know, satellites beaming 5G, you know, millimeter waves at us from every single edge of the globe, uh, they're now considering uh, putting them on airplanes. Welcome to the Airborne Wireless Network. And basically, this is a beacon system that goes from airplane to airplane to ship to ground station. All, you know, connecting the entire world in a big Wi-Fi network that's airborne on a flight near you. So, if you really want to get Wi-Fi'd, um, you can jump on the, your latest airplane flight and wholesale carrier network, uh, you know, basically... They're going to commercial aircraft as many satellites. And I'm sure that, you know, SpaceX's Starlink will interface with this as well. Because in the Starlink um, information, if you read deep into the details, it says that it will communicate with aircraft, um, ships, and vehicles. So creating one big happy family of internet wirelessly worldwide. Um, so, you know, if you thought the 5G towers going up in your neighborhood were a problem, just wait till they take to the airwaves um, in space. It's coming. As you can see in their Microsoft, you know, in their patent right here, uh, airborne wireless network. Uh, it's, it's a real thing. It's going to happen. Um, and unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do about it. And they talk about over the horizon and how they will defeat that um, by having these flights at altitude. And even though they are very low, as we showed earlier in you know the diagram of the um, you know height of the atmosphere, basically 501 right here up on the top is a transmitter that's going to transmit from plane to plane. And you can see right there, there's 501. And it's going to, you know, it's got a transmitter pointing each direction. And there's, um, well, there you go. 5G on your airplane, on the tail end of the air, aircraft. Not going to be able to avoid that either. So, what I'm trying to say is, you know, I hear a lot about 5G. Um, lots of concerns about that sort of thing. What I'm really concerned about, though, is, you know, EMF safety. It's uh, one of the topics on uh, climateviewer.com. And, you know, I think that a lot of people are greatly concerned about it. And there really isn't a lot of, you know, pushback from scientists or, you know, the medical community that are concerned about the rapid rollout of all of these wireless technologies. So I hope that everybody would come over to climateviewer.com slash EMF. You can see that right here under the pollution section, electromagnetic pollution, also known as electrosmog. And the article is titled, Wi-Fi, Cell Phones, Wi-Fi, and EMF Health Effects. And get the facts on that because we are electric. Watch the documentary, Be Resonance Beings of Frequency. It's a great documentary. And, you know, um, understand why does EMF affect me? And this is straight from uh, the, you know, National Health Institute. DNA is a fractal antenna in electromagnetic fields. The wide frequency range of interaction of EMF is functional characteristic of fractal antenna, and DNA appears to possess the two structural characteristics of fractal antennas, electronic conduction and self-symmetry. These properties contribute to a greater reactivity of DNA with EMF in the environment, and DNA damage could account for increased cancer epidemiology, as well as variations in the rate of chemical evolution in early geologic history. And uh, you can see the chart right here on how DNA is a fractal antenna and all the effects that it's going to have on life on Earth. So... I'm concerned about EMF. Um, you know, UK chief medical officer says that teenagers under 16 should not use mobile phones, um, that we should set stricter li exposure limits for all equipment which emits electromagnetic waves. 
Uh, but you know, you got to be pragmatic and you got to do something about this yourself because obviously the government's not going to protect you. Uh, they're just going to allow these guys to just put it up in space. So check out some of the links up here on smart meters, EMF safety, and all of that sort sort of thing. Uh, what can you do about EMF um, exposure? Earthing, uh, ground yourself, limit your use, turn off and unplug cell phones, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth devices at night. Do not use cell phones in your car. Limit yourself on that. Use wireless, wired internet and phone devices instead of wireless ones. And then place bare feet on wet soil, mud, or dirt. This will allow ex excess electricity to pass from your body. Recent scientific studies have confirmed that native tribes have known what no, what native tribes have known for centuries: the earth heals. Mud pits, burying bodies up to the neck, and the like have long been used to cure ailments. It seems ancient therapy has a modern use. Get grounded. And the title of that article is Earthing Health Implications and Reconnecting the Human Body to the Earth's Surface Electrons in the Journal of Environmental and Public Health, 2012. So there is something you can do to protect yourself uh, somewhat. And you can read all about that on climateviewer.com slash EMF. But just know this, that SpaceX just got approval for the launch of 7,000 plus satellites to broadband millimeter waves, um, you know, at your house in, you know, everywhere, every square inch of the planet will be covered in this stuff. And aircraft, um, airlines are, have, are signing on to this airborne wireless network where they will be, you know, acting as flying 5g towers so it's it's coming it's you know an inevitability um you know they they're giving them i believe till 2027 to completely roll out all of space spacex's uh um satellites but they're going to be coming sooner rather than later we all know how these things go so it's an unavoidable thing at this point uh, I don't know how much lobbying or complaining we could do to actually stop this with all the billions of dollars and Facebook backing them and all of that sort of thing. Um, but wireless from space and planes coming soon to a sky near you. This is my story and I'm sticking to it. I hope you guys uh, can avoid as much of this uh, EMF DNA damage as possible. And I hope that you guys will continue to support my work uh, on patreon.com slash climate viewer or one time donation on PayPal or GoFundMe. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, protect yourself from Wi-Fi. You need to start at home. Um, you know, limit your use. Uh, definitely don't let your kids uh, you know, put their wireless laptop on their genitals and sit it there for hours. They're cooking their ovaries. Um, the first things to absorb them are the eyeballs, um, you know, the balls, uh, you know, your thyroid. Uh, me, I have Graves' disease. Well, I had Graves' disease. I'm doing much better now. My last two blood draw um, tests showed that I no longer have Graves disease. So we'll see how long that lasts. But I initially developed severe Graves disease and a very enlarged thyroid as a result of overexposure to EMF and poor diet. Um, and I'm really starting to bounce back. I've gone from 135 pounds up to 160 like a boss. And uh, a lot of that is due to you climate viewers sending me, you know, great information, sending me books. I got educated really quickly on healing my thyroid. And a lot of that has to do with EMF exposure and limiting that. So I hope that you'll do the same. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please spread it around. Wi-Fi, 5G, and broadband from space and aircraft coming to a sky near you. So with this information comes power, and with great power comes great responsibility. So all I ask is that you remember to attack ideas, not people.